flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Chisel? Here. Carlson? Here. Luce? Yes. Neal? Yep. Johnson? Here. Hadley? Here. Bergen? Here. Approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call? Chisel? Aye. Luce? Aye. Neal? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Uh, is there any public comment for um, issues or comments of anything that is not on the agenda? Seeing none, consent agenda. Consent agenda consists of minutes of the August 5th, 2019 meeting, claims, special event application for Luther Homecoming 5K Fun Run Walk, Saturday, October 5th, 2019, Special event application, Alzheimer's Association walk, Saturday, September 14th, 2019. Consider C3 Commercial Design Review, 105 West Water Street, Games XP, permanent sign, uh, which, oh, whoops, sorry, that was not tabled from July 8th. It was for PNZ. Um, item F, expanded outdoor service area for Rubiot for Decora Heritage event. Item G, Resolution 2993, approving the Fiscal 19 Street Finance Report. Consider setting Tuesday, September 24th as the date for a special election to fill the vacancy for Ward 2 Councilperson. Item I, New Class C Liquor License for Impact Coffee with Sunday Sales. Item J, Renewal Class E Liquor License for Backwater Spirits and more, including Class B Wine, Class C Beer, and Sunday Sales Privileges. Item K, Resolution 2994, updating City Depository Resolution. Make a motion for approval of the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion on any of the items from the council? Hearing none, roll call. Carlson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Neil? Aye. Luce? Aye. Public hearing on an easement agreement with Stan Fullerton, VIDA, LC for use of public right of way in 101 West Water Street. This uh, public hearing is for uh, an easement agreement uh, behind uh, the, ad, uh, the property at this address, um, 101 West Water Street. Uh, otherwise known as the Old Pennies Building. Um, the public hearing is required to, for the council to consider going into an easement agreement with the property owners. Um, Stan Fullerton is here. He's working with others to remodel the building at this address. Uh, of course, uh, we all know it's the home for the uh, new Impact Coffee. Uh, the proposal is to remove the dilapidated concrete stairs on the rear of the building, uh, which has already been done. Um, and replaced with a steel structure uh, that's more appropriate for accessibility uh, and provides uh, fire uh, egress to the facility as well. Um, the new stairs will encroach approximately 18 inches uh, into the alley right of way, uh, which necessitates the easement agreement. Uh, the agreement platter in your packet, uh, along with um, some conceptual layouts of the staircase itself. So. This is the time for a public comment on such an easement agreement. If there are any, if there is anybody who would like to make any public comment on this, please come to the podium, state your name and your address. Have you had any comment from the public at all? No comments. Okay. Uh, the one piece that I would interject is that uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did consider a C3 design application uh, because this does uh, impact the facade of the facility. Uh, and the Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval unanimously. I'll close the public hearing. 
Consider Resolution 2991 approving a proposed easement agreement for the use of city right of way at 101 West Water Street with Stan Fullerton, VIDA LLC. I'll make a motion to approve. 2991. Okay, any further discussion? Who seconded? Oh, Steve. Sorry. Any further discussion? Well, by going out another 18 inches and it was already bumped out there, will that impede our cleanability down there? So Jeremy has looked at that uh, and they've walked it off as far as snow plows and that and this is not the narrowest point of that alley. Okay, all right. So. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, our yeah. records here say up to 18, so I just want to oh, clarify yeah, that. It's only a, it's only a 10, ten inch deep, So the new steps are 10 more than the old steps. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call. Hadley. Aye. Luce. Aye. Neil. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Consider C3 Commercial Design Review for 101 West Water Street, VIDA, LC. This is the Planning Zoning's uh, recommendation for the C3 Commercial Design Review, removing and replacing the exi existing steps and landing on south side of the building. I have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Public hearing on plans and specs and bid documents for the library improvement project. I'm clearing some stuff out of here. Uh, so the library um, has been going through uh, renovation and improvement project, uh, and this public hearing is on the plans and specifications for some of the larger uh, improvement projects um, proposed for the library, specifically uh, item number one, membrane roofing system replacement. Item number two, sheet metal gutters and downspouts. Item number three, the EFIS cleaning, water uh, repellents and sealants work. Uh, that's uh, the exterior insulation and finish systems on the side uh, and rear of the newer addition to the library. Uh, concrete repairs and replacements around the loading dock and stairways uh, and south door replacement. Uh, there are uh, bid specs uh, and information in the council's drop box. Um, so this would be the time for public comment on such plans and improvements. Do I, is there anyone that wants to speak to this issue? Come up to the podium, state your name and address. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. Dan Kirkaby, 714 Mechanic Street here in Cora. Mm -hmm. Have the bids been submitted for this work yet? Uh, that's my question. I guess. No, question. this is just the public hearing on the plans and specifications before we send out bids. We did have a pre-bid meeting last week with those that might be interested in bidding mm -hmm. so that we could go through the um, specifications. Okay, I was just concerned since I think you had a number of 225000 or something like that was kind of your estimate or something? Uh, for all of the work combined. I, in all honesty, I'd say that's low. Yeah. I've dealt with that for, for years. So <laughs> that's the, that's that's the engineer's opinion of cost. Is the city going to so. solidify that, or are they just going to proceed so, on that? So that number is the engineer's opinion of cost. That's what our engineer thinks the projects will cost. Okay. Uh, but that's also why we go through the bidding process. Yeah. So when we get the bids, then the council can determine how close or how far those are and funds available. Okay. Yeah, I just want some clarification. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, consider resolution 2992. Oops, close the hearing. Thank you. 
close the, I will close the hearing. Consider resolution 2992, approving the plan specs and bid documents for the library improvement project. I move to approve resolution 2992. Second. Any discussion? The only other thing I would add is that bids are due uh, August 28th at 2 p.m. Um, and then we will present those bids and ask the council to consider awarding uh, based on uh, receiving qualified and responsible bids on September 3rd. Roll call. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Neal? Aye. Considered site plan review for 300 East Water Street, uh, the Dry Run Park. Uh, this is a site plan review that is also being recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, at their last meeting, they reviewed uh, the work here. Uh, there's a grassroots uh, organization, uh, community members, uh, that have developed a plan coming out of the community visioning process uh, over the last year uh, to develop uh, this area into a little pocket park, if you will. Uh, you can see some layout information in your packet as to what they're proposing. Um, in review of the site plan, um, there were very few uh, items that actually matched uh, commercial development, which is our site plan code, basically. Uh, general amenities in this proposal include some lighting, drinking fountains, benches, uh, picnic tables, those types of amenities. Uh, there will be some landscaping, some trees and shrubbery that will be proposed. Uh, and Jeremy and I have been talking uh, with the street department in terms of having the, uh, the city participate a little bit in cleaning up the dry run channel around that area as well. So um, that may or may not be part of the full package, but is something that uh, I think at least the city's committed to, to doing if we're in this area doing work. Um, there aren't any uh, buildings proposed, um, with the exception of maybe a shade structure or something like that. Um, th uh, there aren't any other known code, zoning, or public works issues other than what I've otherwise mentioned. So uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval. Uh, with the presentation to the City Council, uh, in addition to uh, approving the C3 design or site plan application, uh, staff just wants to make certain too that if this project moves forward uh, with private funding that once complete the council will accept it as a city amenity or city park uh, and so we want to make sure that that part is clear as well and that you understand that is that what we're we're accepting that as part of this action it, it when when you accept it or approve the site plan then I think it's with that understanding oh. so um, there there is a private fundraising effort uh, and I know they're well on their way to securing the estimated $170,000 for the park. And would the possibility of um, action be with this item, or is this just a review and it will be coming in the next city council? No, plan. this would be it unless okay. you want to see an update. So okay. approving the site plan is going to make it happen. Okay. Has there been discussion at the Park Rec Board? Yeah, that's the meter. Haha. <laughs> 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 Do we know about the shade structure? Is it a actual roof so that it would repel if people wanted to get out of the rain, or is it a slotted shade that you only get? Because I would speak against a shot, a slotted shade in favor of a solid roof that if like a pergola gazebo kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Avoid I don't that. know if that's been determined or. I'd make a motion to approve the uh, site plan for Dry Run Park. Second. Any other further discussion? Roll call. Hadley? Aye. Luce? Aye. Neal? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Consider site plan review for 
1101 Montgomery Street, Quick Star. Uh, Quick, Star uh, Quick Trip Stores Lacrosse is proposing commercial redevelopment at this location. Um, this is commonly known as the Nordic Express uh, Jeff's Auto site on Commerce in Montgomery. Uh, they're intending to provide a complete demolition of the site and reconstruction of a new convenience store over the two parcels uh, noted. Uh, staff has completed a review per the city code checklist. Uh, that information is in your packet. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission also completed a review uh, and ha is recommending uh, site plan approval. Uh, just a couple of staff notes, I guess. Uh, there is adequate stormwater collection. Uh, that's almost always an issue with new commercial development. Uh, they are working with adjoining property owners as well to clean up some of the stormwater issues in that area, which um, a lot of the utilities there for stormwater are privately owned, so we applaud them for working with their neighbors on cleaning that up a little bit. There are uh, three possible uh, Board of Adjustment variances that uh, will be sought by the applicant. Uh, one is for off-street loading spaces, uh, basically parking. Um, strict application of the code requires 33 parking spaces. Uh, the applicant is uh, showing 27 spaces. Uh, bulk regulations, Commerce Drive on the north side uh, at the street right-of-way line uh, requires a 25-foot setback and the applicant is showing 11 feet 6 inches. And the last one is uh, signage, uh, proposed signage does show a, a digital, digital or electronic sign which are prohibited by code. Uh, and so those, will, those three uh, items will be advanced to the Board of Adjustment. Um, City Utility Departments continue to review a couple of the technical pieces that aren't necessarily site plan or code related. Um, but would be some discretionary items for the city engineer and the water superintendent. Uh, we will plan a, a pre-bid or pre-construction meeting with the owner to work through some of those details as we move it forward. As I mentioned, Planning and Zoning Commission is recommending approval. Uh, your consideration would be contingent on the board, the board of Adjustment granting the variances or the property owner complying with the code on those three items. The, Go ahead. the is that a catchment basin on the corner of Montgomery and Commerce? They are proposing a catchment basement uh, base basin on the east side of the property along Montgomery. Yeah. I believe the owner's representative is here. Yeah, Wade is here. So if there are questions for the owner's sure, representative, if you want to come up to the podium, that'd be great. Mayor and council members, my name is Wade Dumont with Quick Trip out of Lacrosse, and um, really to see if you have any questions, but I'll address the three variance items just a little bit to give you a little confidence that w why we're doing it, um, and then uh, we'll see if I can convince the Board of Adjustment. Um, so the three items that we're looking at is one is the first one that uh, Mr. Bird talked about was the parking, and so the the code is not super specific on every individual use you can come up with, so you pick the closest one. With a convenience store, there's uh, trips are relatively rapid compared to most other retail uses, so we're anticipating that we're not going to need all 33, so that we believe that the 27 would be adequate. Uh, it, there's always going to be times when they'll probably all be full. Um, it already happens at our other store as well, but we. Um, believe you know majority of the time that's it's not going to be a, an issue at all um, so it's a 18 percent difference between what um, the code requires for retail use and we're a C store use which we think is a slightly different so that's one of the reasons why we're doing it the, the biggest reason we're doing that also applies to the setbacks the existing uh, site is very narrow uh, it's a small site, which is also why we needed the additional property to the rear where the uh, auto repair is. Now, the existing store is, if you look at the existing plan, the current canopy is mostly in the city right-of-way. 
So it's not even meeting any of the setbacks in the front yard. Mm -hmm. It also doesn't meet the setbacks in the rear yard. So with the, we're doing a larger building, so it's, it'll be about a 72, 7,300 square foot building, a neighborhood grocery, which is kind of a lot of what we're known for. We will eliminate the setback issues on the, the front and the rear, but the side yard is still the issue. So we're, we're hoping that the city looks at that we're improving it in terms of what's there now. We still do need that, that setback on the side yard, but the, the overall we're improving the setbacks compared to what is existing today. Uh, the other uh, item that we're gonna ask for variance is the sign. Um, the church existing has uh, electronic sign as well, and my understanding is that that prohibition on the electronic signs was supposed to be specifically to the billboards more than anything, but it was written up very broad. So we're going to ask that we would be allowed to have that. It's a smaller reader board with the, the advertising for the different sale items, those kinds of things. Would it be smaller than the yeah. sign on the... Uh, Current store? Ooh, that I I don't know. My guess is it might be similar, but I I don't know. I have not looked at and seen what the comparison is. And just a clarification: when you're saying the current store, you mean the Nordic Express building, rather no. or no, your our existing store? Okay. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. I believe it's smaller than the Nordic Express, the the, the one that they have out Graphic. front right now. Yeah. Okay. So it's smaller. Yes. But it'd be smaller than the church's current sign. I believe so. It seems like theirs is pretty good size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We didn't want to ask for that big. <laughs> Any other questions I might try to answer? Seemed like at PNC you were saying there was significant work between you and the church in terms of that whole drainage and situation there that you're taking Yes, sir. On. The existing 60-inch pipe, so it's a large storm sewer that's right on the property line between the Nordic Express and the auto repair and the church property. And then if you've been by there, there's you can't really see it because of the amount of um, box elders, more than anything, that are growing up in the ravine where that storm sewer exits. And then it, it drains into the city right away. And uh, it's been a, evidently, from what the church has told us, been a maintenance headache forever. And so what we did was we're getting an easement from them, and we're also uh, doing a 10-foot easement on our side of the property where that, so there's a 20-foot easement so that that pipe can be maintained. And that'll also follow the new pipe that we're burying that will go almost all the way out to the city right away. And we're filling that in so that it becomes a mowable uh, swale. So overflow would still go over the top of the pipe, but the main pipe would be extended further, so it's not as much of a problem. Thank you. Hopefully, no problem. Yes, this is the goal. And Jeremy, you've looked at that. Um, the church has already agreed to those easements, so we'll have those um, ready to record when we close. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'd move acceptance of the site plan. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Luce? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Consider professional services agreement with McClure Engineering Company for preliminary and final roadway design for proposed Locust Road Improvement Project? Uh, there was a street committee meeting just prior to the regular council session here at 5 o'clock, and we reviewed uh, the pr proposed agreement with the committee. The engineering services agreements for the preliminary and final design work carrying the Locust Road project through bidding. Uh, bidding is anticipated to be part of the DOT schedule uh, and is slated for approximately March of 2020. Um, uh, we've given direction to McClure and they have uh, put that information into this uh, professional services agreement that the base project will be College Drive to Pinecrest with a bid alternate
planned for Pinecrest to Highland. Uh, and then it'll be up to the council then to see, you know, where bids come in, whether that alternate is accepted or not. Uh, there are several other pieces to the um, agreement that's been in your Dropbox for a little while, so I would ask if you have any questions about the extent of that services agreement. Or Ross, if you have anything else to share. Everything would have to be laid out prior to that March DOT meeting. Of course, yep. Okay. Yeah, this is this yep. is just taking us through engineering. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the professional services agreement with McClure Engineering. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hadley. Aye. Luce. Aye. Neal. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Bergen. Aye. Consider Ordinance 1235, amending Chapter 13.20 of the Decor City Code by amending water rates. This is the third reading. I move for approval of Ordinance 1235, amending Chapter 13.2 and adopting. Second. Any discussion? Chad, has there been any public comment? Uh, no, I'm Garden not aware of any comments. Okay. Nope. Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Bergen? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Luce? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Neal? Aye. Consider ordinances 1236 amending Chapter 13.28 of the Decor City Code by amending sewer rates. This is the third reading. Again, I'd move for approval of the third reading and adopt. Second. Any other further discussion? Of 1236, correct. 1236. Yep. Any further discussion? Roll call. Chisel? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Luce? Aye. Neal? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Hadley? Aye. Bergen? Aye. City Manager, Department Ed's Council Reports. Uh, just a couple of things to update the council and or the public. Uh, the next regular council meeting because of the Labor Day holiday will be on Tuesday, September 3rd. Uh, so make a note of that in your calendar. Uh, Monday, August 26th at 5 p.m. there is a uh, meeting set on the Broadway Street Alley Project. So mark your calendars for that one. Um, uh, just an update on the Oneota Drive Bridge, um, the east and west abutment wings have been poured. Uh, the contractor is administering a very tidy, clean, organized work site out there. If you haven't been out there, um, it's very impressive to see how they're uh, moving that project along. So work is commencing on the Oneota Drive Bridge. I think now they're waiting for the um, truss spans to, to come in before they continue any other work. Uh, just a reminder that uh, the Decorah Rotary Club is hosting their community trail day tomorrow. So there will be some folks uh, out on the trail, trot run trail tomorrow. Uh, and then just a little update on the Planning and Zoning Commission. They've spent the last couple of meetings talking about Airbnbs and short term rentals in our community. Uh, and while they're still early in the discussion and, and maybe a little unsure of, of what to do at this point in time, they have acknowledged that uh, it's impacting several different aspects of our community. One is affordable housing. Uh, the other is um, whether we want to see these types of rental units in certain areas or certain zoning districts. Um, whether we want to offer any type of registration or inspection program for short-term rental units. Uh, they're currently not inspected or registered. So those are some of the issues uh, that PNC is uh, working through. In the last two years, I think we've grown by about 100 percent in terms of the numbers of short-term rentals, Airbnbs and VRBOs that we have in our community. Uh, we're just over 50-some-odd units, uh, depending on how we kind of count them or categorize them. So 
uh, continue to watch that, I think, for some recommendations from P&Z. Could you make just a quick comment on the excellent work your intern has been doing on that? Yeah, so Ira Kuhn, my intern from Luther, uh, has been spending a ton of time researching these. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy task because uh, Airbnbs and VRBOs don't, as, don't always list their address. Uh, so he's doing a lot of snooping with pictures and beacon and, and, and whatnot. But uh, he's generated that list. Mm -hmm. He's put information into the zoning districts. Uh, and his next step will be to, uh, to graph those on a map so we can kind of see if they're clustered or spread out around the community. So. He can send that out electronically. So. Mm -hmm. And are all of our the VRBOs in town, are they, are they all paying the hotel motel tax on a regular basis? They, they do pay the hotel motel tax. Yep. Of course, that's uh, collected and enforced at the state level. Uh, the city's not involved in that process. Um, but I, I know that they are knowing how the, the Department of Revenue follows up on that type of thing. But only if they're listed on the website. Is that correct? Not, not necessarily listed. Okay. Uh, if they're registered oh, okay. through those organizations, they collect it. Okay. And our current ordinance best talks about these situations as boarding rooms? Is that Boarding right? rooms or boarding houses is the most current language <laughs> we have. It's pretty antiquated. That was a good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Department heads. Wait. Is that a new roll or a new donut? Couple of things we want to get done. No. Couple of things we want to get done right away. We want to get two police officers hired because we're down two. So we've started that process. Uh, the applications are out now. Are they starting to come back in? It takes about three months to hire a police officer. So we wanted to make sure we got that going. Nope. <laughs> and some IT training. <laughs> <laughs> Can pass it so down to Chopper. <laughs> so we're gonna, we started that process to get two people hired because we're down two. We've also started the uh, promotional process to fill the assistant chief position. And uh, we've been searching for an assessment center, somebody to help out with that promotion. Uh, started uh, sending out feelers today, seeing who was interested and what kind of response we get. So we're moving forward with those. <laughs> uh, Dunning Springs Bridge is close to complete. It, uh, um, the rock work is all done. Shed, uh, ocean and rain pulled and finished up there last week. We're waiting on a railing that's under construction right now. And there's some landscaping out that's very close to the complete structure. We're working on it off the street here. So pretty cool. Check it out at the end of the month. Is there thought, Andy, about keeping cars from going up the road or not? There is a discussion going on. Yep, yep. Probably would let them go up there, but maybe only provide parking for handicapped. So you can get up there and drop somebody off if you want. Good plan, that's it. Pool will be closing. Pool, yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no dog. No dog. No doggy day anymore, Andy? <laughs> uh, Mike or Wanda? Okay, just a couple of things. Our hallway project. Oh. What we do is starting tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. So if you want to get the city, it'll be shut down. So you'll either have to come in this way or park in front, come in the front door, and come around. And then since we have now set formally set that election. Um, just so the public knows, anyone who chooses to run for that second ward seat um, needs to submit those up or their nomination papers back by August 30th. And they have to be kind of pre taken to the auditor's, the auditor's office at the courthouse is where they're that be done by August 30th. How many signatures do you need? Ten. Ten. 
Kristen. Todd? Uh, as of last Thursday, well number seven, which is the well down by the football field, was taken out of service um, and buried below it on the pump. So that was pulled last week, and they're in the process of repairing that pump and replacing that back on the next Jeremy? Um, our Broadway Alley project will be open again for this Friday for your consideration and award on Monday. Andy. <coughs> Nothing this evening, Mayor. Emily. Uh, no, we had a great um, meet and greet in Ward 2. It was, uh, I think we had over 50 people. Good. Um, and it was great to meet all the people in Ward 2. It's fun. Good. Andy. Uh, we'll have a brief utility meeting following this. Give me five minutes. Um, talking about stormwater. Yeah. Hmm. There's two agenda items right there. Yeah. yeah. Steve. Nothing. Um, the, as you may have read in the paper um, and been notified, the Main Street application that Decora submitted was not accepted this time. Um, everyone who applies for Main Street uh, Iowa is able to uh, work with the Iowa Economic Development Authority to receive feedback and to receive recommendations from the review committee about next steps. And so we held that meeting this last Friday and had folks come um, from Des Moines up to talk to us. And it was a really robust discussion. We got to hear again, as we are frequently heard in this community, how the rest of the state really views Decora as a beautiful, unique, uh, very asset-filled community. Um, and they also left us with a series of recommendations of additional uh, programs in the state that we could make use of um, and had a really uh, engaging discussion with us as we consider um, our next steps as a city of really investing um, in maintaining a vibrant downtown Decorah. Um, and we were encouraged to consider applying for the Main Street uh, designation at the next opportunity, which would likely be two years from now. Uh, and I want to just say a really big thank you to the many community leaders, uh, city commission members, and council members who participated in that application process. And thank you to fellow council members for supporting the application. The Sustainability Committee continues to meet. Um, we've broken up into task groups and uh, for a um, variety of topics, mine being um, economic development, and we have looked at uh, the two major concerns for economic development within our within my task group, which is child care mm -hmm. and affordable housing. Uh, it's obviously a statewide problem. Other groups are looking at quality of life, uh, water, um, air, uh, lots of lots of different things that make the community sustainable. Um, but we are getting closer to uh, starting to draft the, the plan to bring back to the council for adoption. Good. Good. Nothing, Mayor. Good. Uh, Chad and I think it was, who else was there for the, the Social Security thing? Was it just you and I and whatever? The Social Security people came and the one person was from the Kansas City office. Uh, there is a gentleman that currently is in the local office that may be retiring and their intent is not to bring in another person, but that they are working to do a video service that would be housed in a host facility at some place. They are still studying that. Um, I, I was quite clear on the disappointment of not having a person 
here as I know that that office is extremely busy uh, by people that go down and have to wait. Even that Monday, somebody reported me to me that there were 27 people in there and they had to wait for uh, an hour and a half before they got through. Um, obviously, uh, the direction that these people are taking are a direct result of uh, less funding for the Social Security piece. So I'll be starting to contact uh, legislators and whatever, and I'm sure they'll probably get more information out. But um, I know to bring somebody else in, they still have to have security. So I think that was the piece. But Gabriel from the chamber office was That there. was the other one that was with who? Rep and he did a fine job representing the he did. You know, downtown. He, he did a great job. I'm going to be on vacation from September 3rd through the 20th. So I'm looking forward to going on a road trip to Nova Scotia. It will, <laughs> it will be fun. Uh, anything else? School starting. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. We're just going to adjourn. So